Hey everybody, Chris Pearson here with another episode of Nebulosity. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the neighborhood. So we're here at the end of a beautiful summer season and fall is just around the corner. You can feel the air change. It's absolutely beautiful here in the Northern Hemisphere. So fortunate, we've had a few nights of, of clear skies and I'm not trying to jinx myself, but we've gonna, we're gonna have a few more. So using that window of opportunity, I'm gonna try to do a little bit of a challenge here and go after a narrow band object as well as a broadband object. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with those terms, broadband simply means all light or most of the light uh, spectrum all of the visible wavelengths and some of the wavelengths that are invisible to humans. And in this case, I'm gonna be going after the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, which is a beautiful, beautiful object just off, off of the uh, constellation Cassiopeia in the sort of Eastern sky as the, as the night goes on. So I'm gonna be shooting that for a couple of days and I'll be using a broadband filter. So I have the IDAS D2 LPS or light suppression filter. Uh, this is a fantastic filter. I've got a couple of others. I've got the Optolong L Pro. Um, and honestly, if I wasn't in the light polluted skies I'm in here in the DC region, I'd probably just shoot, you know, without any filter, just go straight for the broadband data. So I'm gonna be using a one-shot color camera because I wanna to try to capture as much data as I can with these nights, assuming that the clouds don't roll in. So that's gonna be the broadband target. Now for narrowband, I'm going after a classic uh, amateur astronomer favorite in the Cygnus remnant. Now this was a star that went supernova many, many thousands of years ago and still thousands of years more to, for the light to reach Earth. But it's up there in the constellation Cygnus, which is really, really vertical up near Zenith in the night sky in the Northern Hemisphere around this time of year. So I'm gonna be able to get a lot of good data and I'm gonna be using the, uh, I'll be using the Optolong L-Extreme narrowband filter. This is a two inch variety of this filter. They also sell it as a clip-in for DSLR cameras like the one I'm using to film this uh, video right here. But I'm gonna thread this two inch filter into my imaging train and that's gonna isolate the hydrogen alpha gases that are coming out of that, uh, that supernova remnant. That, that ionized hydrogen gas gives off that red color, that red glow, and it also captures oxygen three, which gives off the blue glow when that gas is ionized. So really, really amazing object. And it's actually three in one. You've got sort of the bat nebula, you've got a, the witch's broom, you've got Pickering's triangle, all of it. And because I'm shooting with the red cat, that wide angle lens, uh, I'm gonna be able to capture all of it in one shot. So. That's really the name of this video, to get as many days on both of these objects as much as possible. Start with, you know, the Cygnus remnant, and as that sort of sets into the sky, turn over to Andromeda. And that's really, you know, it's something about astrophotography. If you've got your lineup and you know where the objects are gonna be and you're using Stellarium, hopefully you've watched that video where I had my sort of nine tips for beginner astrophotographers, you'll know that planning these kinds of things out where you can turn to one object, shoot it for a few hours, and then turn to another, um, really, really helpful. And if you've got two, you know, two or more filters, you can throw a filter wheel onto your imaging train, uh, or you might just have a little, you know, uh, a little drawer, a filter drawer that you can, you know, remove uh, those, ob those filters from. Um, and we'll, we'll see sort of how successful we are with it. But in any case, that's the point of this video. Hope you guys like it. And, uh, you know, leave a comment at the bottom if you saw something that you liked. If you, if you really love these objects, give them a shout out. They're two of uh, my absolute favorite. And uh, hopefully at the end, we've got something worth showing. See you soon.
Okay, and we're back. Uh, yes, that is Halloween candy behind me. My kids just went trick-or-treating a couple of days ago, so that means it's early November here in the US. Uh, time flies when you're having fun, like a buddy of mine says at work very often. It's absolutely true, especially with astrophotography. So welcome to my studio slash workstation. Uh, you know, my background is I work in international development and I manage programs all over the world. So this is, uh, this is my sort of little station here and I use it for astrophotography editing as well. So, you know, it's a small space, but it's a really, it's a lot of fun. And I've, I'm happy to report that the past couple of months have been extremely productive. In addition to shooting the Cygnus Loop, or the Cygnus Remnant rather, and Andromeda, I've been able to get out to the coast, spend time with friends and family, just really prioritizing things in life that are equally important, you know, to astrophotography. And hopefully you guys are doing the same out there. Uh, beyond that, I've also gotten a lot of boxes in the mail the past couple of months. So definitely stay tuned. There's gonna be a lot of good information uh, about sort of my, my journey, my continued journey into this hobby and, and hopefully some tips and things around uh, uh, new experiences that you may be interested in as well if you're also new in the hobby. Having said that, the project itself, you know, the Andromeda Galaxy and Cygnus were very successful. Uh, Cygnus is, is just a, a, such a bright region and when you have the narrow band filter like the Optolong L Extreme, you can just pour on more and more data. And because it was in sort of the upper portion of the atmosphere for a good portion of the early fall, it was just really easy to shoot. So in the end, I got somewhere between 15 to 20 hours on that and was just able to just crunch the data and keep the best of it. Uh, and, and ultimately, you know, the, the editing was great. So it wasn't very difficult, a lot of contrast, the red, the blues, and the, and the background, you know. So you're, you're gonna see it and hopefully, uh, you know, if you like it, let me know, give me that thumbs up or tell me, uh, you know, what you would do differently if you think that it could be improved. As far as Andromeda is concerned, that's a little bit of a different story. Editing galaxies is an entire different process. Now, you can get some natural colors for sure because you're shooting in broadband, so you're getting all those visible wavelengths. But even still, if you really want it to pop, you gotta go through and you gotta edit it piece by piece, starting with the core and sort of working your way up. So I did that and I'd recommend, you know, you'd look at a number of uh, videos on, on YouTube or elsewhere. Uh, Ruzine of Astrophorsography, I wanna give him a shout out. He did a, a really great, uh, you know, tutorial with Photoshop on how to edit Andromeda. So, you know, I can drop a link in the description below for that. Uh, but there are a number of people who, who have, you know, done a number of tutorials. And if you want, you want me to show my tutorial on how I do Andromeda, drop a comment in the below and maybe that'll be a, a future video. So in terms of Andromeda itself, I did a little something extra. I added hydrogen alpha to the image. So the end result is gonna be an HA RGB composite image. And with that, you'll be able to see some of those little red plumes of, of gas clouds throughout the, particularly the outer arms of Andromeda. It makes it look really cool. It gives a little extra zing to it, uh, you know, versus the, the regular picture. So overall, I feel really great about what, was, what I was able to accomplish over the eight days and you know, nights of shooting. And uh, I hope that you guys get out there and, and take a crack at these objects, if not this year, as they're starting to set, you know, as we get later into the year, perhaps even next. But you could still squeeze a few hours out, even now in early November. So let's go ahead and get to the reveal. Thanks again for everything. And uh, hope you guys are having good luck with all of your projects. We'll see you here again in the neighborhood very shortly. Stay tuned for uh, more great content as we head into the holidays. Take care, be safe, and uh, we'll see you again.
good, man. Not, not crazy fast. Normal fast. Normal speed. Normal speed. Normal speed. Oh, Keep I going. Got him. Keep going. I got him. Okay. Whoa. There we go. Good job. Good job. <laughs>